Do you love pizza? Do you like making pizza? Are you trying to achieve that really puffy crust on your Napolitana pizza dough? Are you ready to raise your pizza game? Well, we are gonna make the most amazing, no-nonsense, 100% bigger pizza dough. Roll the intro. I'm Chef Alex Lazic and welcome back to Eat the World. I'm so grateful that you're joining me here today. I'm not much of the kind of person that's big into self-promotion or bragging, probably much to my detriment, but it just seems a little bit vulgar to me. Do you know what I mean? I've done a lot of high-end work. I've looked after the royal family. I've looked after the Emperor of Japan, the Dalai Lama, countless, countless famous people at a very high level of work. That's what I used to do. Other things I've done in my career is I've owned a bakery, I've owned several restaurants, a small brewery, and I've actually done consulting for a European pizza chain. So I kind of know what I'm talking about. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm not gonna lead you astray, I'm not gonna give you all kinds of gimmicky things, when really all you wanna have is the good, honest recipe and a good method that you will always achieve good results. Well, that's what I'm gonna try and do for you in my pizza series. Well, my first pizza dough recipe, Napolitana Pizza 101, was a big hit, so I'm going to follow that up with a more complicated pizza dough recipe now. But if you haven't watched the first video, please, I recommend that you do. I'll post the link at the end of this video. Now, I've watched a, quite a few other pizza videos on YouTube, and I have to say I was a little bit disappointed by some of them. Even some of the recipes I saw with channels with really big audience had some questionable processes and recipes. Some of the videos seem to be a little bit more gimmicky than actually having sincere content. There was just a bit more of a salesman kind of attitude to it. Whenever I see that, my alarm bells start going off. People are constantly pushing, this is the ultimate, this is the next level, this is the most amazing thing you'll ever do. I take that with a salt. I think it requires a bit more scrutiny. And as I've said before, if it looks like bullshit, it probably is. Now, I've tried a few of these recipes and my instincts were right. So here is a no-nonsense, 100% bigger pizza dough, guaranteed to give you really good results every time. Before we begin, can you smack that subscribe button and like and comment down below? I really would appreciate all those sort of things. It makes a big difference for me. And as always, if you have any questions, please engage with me. That makes my day, literally. I love helping people and I love being here to share the knowledge that I have. Biga is a method of pre-fermenting a commercial yeast starter to develop a more complicated, complex, and flavorful dough that has a lot of structure to it. Biga is commonly regarded as a good method to achieve a really big puff in your Napolitana pizza. It really isn't as complicated as you might think, but it does take a little bit of time. You cannot rush the best pizza dough. It needs time to develop, and this one can be done in between in about two or three days. But really, if you're gonna put the effort in, go for that three-day biga. It makes such a difference. Okay, beautiful people, thanks again for joining me here today. I think you are really going to be impressed with this video and the process, and more importantly, the results that I'm gonna get for you. So, stick around to the end, and let's see what happens. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's start with the flour. You want to use double O flour made from Napolitana pizza and high temperature cooking. That will give you the best results. If you don't have any, you can still do this with double O flour, but your temperature of the oven will need to be a bit lower. I can't give you an exact temperature as there are so many factors, but I'd start at around 700 degrees Fahrenheit and take it from there. Our big is going to consist simply of flour, water, and yeast. Our first step is to rehydrate the yeast in warm water. Please always rehydrate your yeast. It's good practice. Trust me. Now guys, this is a longer video. I wanted to cut it down, but there's too many important steps going on. So please stick through it. It's really important to get the best results. Once your yeast is rehydrated in warm water, pour it over the surface of the flour, and then we are going to mix it gently, trying not to create a cohesive dough. We just want that water absorbed. Then we are gonna rest the biga overnight. The pr this process will develop the flavor and structure of the dough in a wonderful way. In a way, this is kind of an Audelie's method, which is kind of a way of really developing the gluten in the dough. Once you've mixed it with your spoon, get into it with your hands, just folding the strands through the dry flour to moisten it. Don't go too crazy about it. Just some nice loose strands are perfect. 
Then pop it into an airtight container and let it rest at room temperature for about an hour and in the fridge it goes overnight. Okay team, so we've taken our Biga out of the fridge, it's rested overnight, and actually in this case 24 hours, but you can actually leave it for 48 hours if you want to. So when you've taken it out, like I said, we're going to warm it up a little bit, because it's been in the fridge, and it is, it smells lovely, and it's gorgeous and perfect, and you can see it's clumped together a bit now, which is nice, we want it nice and stringy like that, which is perfect. So this is doing really, really well. Now, what I'm gonna get you to do at this stage is we're gonna break it up into little pieces and we're gonna put it in our mixing bowl. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so now we have our biga and I've torn it up into smaller pieces and put it in our mixing bowl. Now we're gonna reintroduce about 170 grams or milliliters of hot, or warm water back into the biga to develop the hydration that we need for the pizza dough. Now, what I'm going to do at this stage is I've got another six grams of yeast. So I'm gonna add another six grams of yeast into this dough because I really want this to develop an amazing puff. Now, quite a few recipes do this, but this is slightly different to what other people do and I think this is a superior method. So I've measured out 50 mils of warm water here, and I'm gonna add this to our yeast to rehydrate it. Now, I know a lot of people just sprinkle yeast in, but I guarantee you, rehydrating your yeast is a superior method of working with dry yeast because it will develop faster. It'll melt into your dough and get absorbed into the flour better. I promise you this is an important step even if you're just uh, even if you're making beer some people just sprinkle in the yeast on top of the wort I always 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 and I've done experiments with it I always rehydrate my dry yeast so please do that we're gonna turn the mixer on and start adding liquid to it little by little and we want to do this slowly so we give the dough the flour time to absorb that liquid whilst developing developing the gluten structure. If we just chucked in all the liquid at once, it would kind of break apart some of the gluten structure that's there. And it and it'd take longer to develop and it wouldn't be as strong. The beautiful thing about a biga is the structure and the strength of the dough is is incredible. That's what gives it that bigger puff um, that you see and that's what a lot of people are after. So I'm gonna turn the mixer on and we're gonna do that little bit by little bit. If you don't have a powerful enough mixer, or if you're doing it by hand, that's great, but you might, if your mixer is smaller, you might overheat it a little bit. So just keep an eye on it, because this is quite a low density or low hydration dough as it is right now. And it, that flour is strong. If you've used Neapolitan style flour, that's a strong flour. So that could wreak havoc with your mixer. So be careful. I just wanted to stop for a second. Can you see how this dough is really developing now? I, it really excites me when dough is being made. It is such an organic thing. It's living, it's breathing, it's changing. There's chemical reactions happening. Its structure is changing. It's so cool. But anyways, if you can see it now, it's from when it started to where it's at now. It's really developing that texture now that we want. Just a little bit more water to add and we'll be there. Okay, let's give this a try and see what's going on here. I think that's pretty good. Look at that. Look at that window. Oh, just a little bit of a crack. Look, we'll leave this for two more minutes and I think we're there. That looks beautiful. That looks absolutely lovely. Okay, it's not snapping. 
It's got a nice stretch. Got a nice window pane. This is a, a beautiful dough. I love high hydration doughs. They're so much fun to work with. Look at that. Anyways, okay. Next step. It is so luscious, I think is a great word that I'm, I'm gonna use here. It is so luscious looking and it's so strong and it's very high hydration, which I love working with high hydration doughs. They're so much fun and I'll show you why I love it. So this is gonna be a sticky dough. What I'll do is I'm just gonna wipe the counter with just a little bit of water. You don't need to have oil. You can have oil if you want but I like to do this. Now what we're gonna do here is just add a little bit more of layered structure. There's our dough there. Nothing wrong with it, but we're just gonna, gonna wet my hand again. And that stops the dough from sticking. Just a little bit of a wet hand. We're gonna stretch and fold. And turn it, we're gonna stretch and fold. Then we're gonna do the same here. Bit of a stretch and fold. And then another stretch and fold. Let's just do, I don't know if we're going to be able to get another one out of this. That's pretty tight. So I'm just going to give it some tension on the surface by rolling it like this. And rolling it like that. You see it's got this surface tension now. And that's beautiful. It's already starting to develop some nice gas in there. So we've got that dough that was a little bit flatter earlier. Let's see if we need, wow, there we go. We can do a couple more. It was flatter earlier, but, and it was sticky, but now it's not sticky. The more you work with it like this, giving it folds, the more structure develops. And you see now it's starting to hold its shape. That's why I find this so interesting. It's so satisfying to work with. So what I want to do now is bulk ferment this again overnight. And this is going to give us because we've just reintroduced some fresh yeast into this, or, or yeast, not fresh yeast, you know what I mean? And we want those flavors to develop. We don't want to just have that yeasty flavor, because that's what you will have. I've tried some of the recipes that I've seen online that reintroduce yeast at this stage, and then they just ball it up and make the pizza. Well, it's, it's, it's still a bit harsh. It's like having whiskey that's just been made. You want to age it a little bit. So this is going to age and develop overnight. So we're going to put this, Leave it now for an hour or two at room temperature to warm up because it is cold right now. It's like, it's not a bad temperature, but we just want that yeast to be activated and developed and go, hello, what's going on? So we're going to have that, then we're going to pop it in the fridge, back in our container. We'll give this a couple more folds, develop some more structure. Okay, we're going to take this, put it back in the container and rest it for an hour, pop it in the fridge and we'll come back tomorrow. Sleep well, little doe. And good morning, beautiful people. Here is our beautiful dough that we assembled last night with our biga. So this is day two, or day three, I should say. We made the biga day one, and then we finished the dough yesterday. We let that rest overnight. And let's have a look at what it looks like. I mean, look at that. That is spectacular. Look at the structure, look at those bubbles. This is absolutely beautiful. Couldn't hope for better. You can see it's still quite a wet dough, but that's good. Um, this is gonna be very workable, but like, look at this. That is a strong dough. It is fantastic. I am so excited to make pizza with this. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to ball it up and I'll walk you through that process. Now at this stage, I'm gonna use a little bit of olive oil, just so it doesn't prevent it from sticking. You could use water again, but I'm just gonna rub it a little bit on my hands, and a little bit on the countertop, and we'll take this dough out. I should put a little bit on my scraper. You can use a bigger metal scraper if you want, but this works perfectly well as well. That's what this is designed for. Getting into these corners, just loosen it up a bit, and then we're gonna spill it out onto the countertop. Now, here's our dough, and it's fabulous. Now, I'm going to weigh out 280 gram dough balls. And I think it's about that. Let's have a look. Put a drop of oil on a scale so it doesn't stick. Two. <laughs> 
285. How good am I? 283. Perfect. Once you've got a bit of experience, you can kind of tell the weight of things just by looking. Like I said in my last pizza video, the only way to get a good round pizza is to have a good round ball. Now there's lots of different ways that you can shape your balls. Um, a lot of people like to do that folding over and squeeze it off at the end, kind of like the fresh mozzarella method. But if you've set, if you've portioned out your dough like this, you can just do as I'm doing. We can just fold it over a bit. This is pretty easy. We don't want to lose any of the air, but this is going to give us a beautiful round ball with lots of structure. And then we're going to take it, we're going to get that surface tension that we want. Just using the palm of your hand at a 45 degree angle, we're just creating that tension on the surface of the ball. And you can see we've got a beautiful dough ball there. You can already see the gas in, in, the, uh, in the dough. And you can see this beautiful doll ball is going to be put aside for now and while we do the other ones. It's, it's such a joy working with a dough that you know is really, really good. And I can tell that this dough is really good. So I'm pretty excited about this. So let's get the structure happening. It's a simple sort of, not quite a slap, but just a fold over. And you can see how it changes from that to that really quickly. You're developing that structure again. You're going to build some surface tension on the top of the ball. And that was that easy. How perfect is that? Gorgeous. So I put two in here and I put two in here just so I don't crowd them. It's not a big deal if you do, if they do stick together a little bit, you can still cut them up. But I just wanted to go for just a little bit more perfection today. And uh, there we go. We are going to let these rest now, probably for a few hours and let them come up to room temperature and let that yeast develop further and get a little bit more puffy. So we'll see you in a few hours. Here's our backdrop for today's pizza making. Bit of a drainy day, but um, quite sweet. There's no shortage of hungry visitors out on the bay. Okay guys, so if you've got an uni fire or other sort of combustible pizza oven, this is my little quick trick to get it lit. Little butane torch. And that's about it, and it doesn't take too long at all. And you got yourselves a good flame going. I'm gonna pop this in, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so here's our little setup. Working from left to right in order of our workflow. Get yourself well set up and organized before you begin. I'm making a very simple salami pizza today, so just to illustrate, so there's no major production happening. So our, here's our rested dough balls. Just ha dust them lightly with flour to loosen them up to get them in on the board. You don't want to ruin that round shape. We think. Then we are going to add a bit of flour to our board to move the dough onto. Cover both sides lightly in flour. Now have gentle hands. This dough is soft and delicate at this stage, so you don't need to go crazy with it. Normally when I'm making pizzas, I'll do it a lot faster, but let's just take our time and gently press from the center to the outside, gently stretching our dough as we go. I'm going to leave a nice crust ring or cornicione around the outside. This is probably a little more than I would normally do for my taste, but again, I am just want to emphasize that puff that we are after. This dough ball is enough for a 12 inch pizza, but clearly I'm not going that big for this demonstration. Also, I'd suggest popping any big obvious air bubbles right now as they will probably burn. Now, I usually build my pizza on my peel, but you can do whatever works for you. I have a little system that I follow. So when you're ready, give the peel a very light dusting of flour and gently transfer the base onto the peel. I try and dust off any excess flour in the process as we're moving it over. I then reshape my pizza and begin topping. First, I give it a little shake to make sure that we are, aren't sticking. I like to a nice ladle of tomato sauce. If you aren't making your own, you should. It's so much better than the canned sauces, trust me. It's a five minute job and I have a recipe on my website. I'll, I'll have a link for it down below. A lot of people use that Muti canned pizza sauce, which is nice, but really if you compare it to fresh pizza sauce, it kind of tastes canned. Like it's got a very muted flavor. For my cheese, I'm going to add a little bit of fresh bocconcini, which is basically fresh mozzarella. 
and then I have just some simple really nice salami Italian salami that I'm going to use as the protein on this pizza Once that's done, I give the pizza another little shake and it's off to the oven we go. The temperature here is about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. You could go a little less if you'd like for the first one until you're comfortable that your pizza is cooking nicely. And well, in our pizza goes. It should launch easily. Um, close the door and then we're going to wait about 20 to 30 seconds. If you're unsure, just keep turning it regularly. That's the safest method. I love this part. It's so exciting to watch this incredible process come together and it smells amazing. When you guys are happy with your pizza, take it out carefully and ideally eat it straight away. But until it's ready, don't be shy. Just keep turning it, checking it. It's better to have that oven door open and closed and turning your, your pizza regularly so you have a nice, beautiful pizza instead of burning it. I see so much of that online. People burning their pizzas and trusting <laughs> their ovens too much. But look at this amazing pizza and listen to that crispiness. Seriously though, look at that amazing puff that we've achieved. 100% vegan pizza dough. It is absolutely spectacular. Now we're going to make one more pizza before we start dissecting them. So I just want you to see the process one more time and see how I work with the dough. You see the dough is super soft and it's super malleable and it's so nice to work with. You don't have to have heavy hands with it. Just go gently and take your time with this. You don't want to ruin that beautiful shape that you're creating. So again, we're going to start from the middle, pressing out the air from the center towards the outside of the dough. And we're going to leave a nice thick cornicione in this case, um, because I want to, again, emphasize the puffiness that it's created with this 100% bigger pizza dough. Once you're happy with the rough shape of your pizza, just transfer over your peel. I mean, that's how I do it. People do it differently. People like Some people like to garnish it on the board, then transfer to the peel, then into the oven. Look, do whatever works for you. You don't have to have one set thing. Well, when you are ready, transfer to the peel. I like to garnish it here, like I said, just a light dusting of flour. And then I put my simple toppings on. A lot of people overdo their toppings I've seen. Just keep it simple. I, I, I like to have good quality ingredients that you can really taste instead of overloading it with too much stuff. Okay, once your pizza is garnished, make sure you give it that little shake to make sure it's not sticking to the peel. And then into your oven it goes. Again, keep turning it every 20 to 30 seconds. Make sure you don't burn it. And when you're ready and you're happy with how well it's done, then take it out and off we go. Again, keep your oven temperature lower if you are struggling or if you're unsure. There's no harm in doing that. Now this pizza is having its final turn and then out it comes. And it is spectacular. Look at this beautiful, beautiful, crispy pizza. <laughs> Okay guys, here's our bigger pizza. And this is so amazing. Look at that puff. I am just so excited by this. This is perfect. And that crust is beautiful. It's got such a depth of flavor. It is amazing. I'm so excited for you guys to try this recipe out because this is a foolproof, no BS, Bega, 100% Bega recipe. Give this a try. And guys, 
hit the subscribe button, like, comment, please ask me any questions. Like I said, I love engaging with you guys. It makes my day to hear from you. So please, please, please do all those things and I really appreciate it. I'm gonna enjoy this pizza and share it with my colleagues. This is so awesome. Look at this beautiful place. How lucky am I? This is wonderful. Guys, look at this. This is so good. Mmm, amazing. Right, I'm gonna clean up. Thanks guys. Subscribe. Subscribe.